Hi there, my name is Marley and welcome to my channel. Another month has passed and so I'm uploading another video where I talk about what I watched during the month of October. So first I'm gonna go through the TV shows I watched and then we're gonna talk about the movies, a lot of which are spooky and horror since it was the month of Halloween. So had to have those spooky vibes. First of all, we have TV shows. I finished up, or I should say, the season finished up of Big Brother season 22, which was the all-star season. If you guys watched my previous What I Watched This Month videos, you would see I have not been enjoying this season and the finale continued to be like the rest of the season and basically it was super predictable and not very interesting. I don't feel bad spoiler spoiling it at this point, so I'll just say Cody did win, which you could honestly tell from the very beginning. And he did deserve it technically, as he was the only person to not go up on the block the whole season. He won so many competitions and had so many alliances, but it just made for a boring season. I really hope that the next season can have better casting, no more like repeat people, just new people who actually want to play Play big brother also I keep noticing the glare in my glasses sorry about that another show I finished this month was the final season of the 100 now I have not been a huge fan of the 100 for all of its what eight seasons seven seasons that it had but I have to say I was really moved by the very last episode and I loved it so that's the main thing I want to say. I feel like they wrapped it up very well. While I was never a huge fan of so many things, we have been with these characters for so long and you really feel for them and love their connection with each other. They all went through such traumatic things together that they're like a family. Don't want to spoil how it ends, but let's just say the, the last scene was just so beautiful. I loved it. I cried and that's coming from a not a big fan of the show, so... Another show I binged this month was The Haunting of Bly Manor. So this is the sequel season, I guess, to The Haunting of Hill House, which I liked. I wasn't like obsessed with it or anything, but I quite liked it. I thought it was really scary. Haunting of Bly Manor had high expectations, right? Like most of the world, we've been waiting for it. Found out that it's based on the Turn of the Screw book, which I recently watched a movie called Turning this year that was also based on it. So I went into it feeling a little disappointed because I was like, oh, I'm already familiar with this story. But I was a little interested in how they would adapt the story differently. And at the end of the day, I was disappointed. Basically, it's about this girl, Danny. She's American. She moves to the UK for like a fresh start. Her history is a little bit mysterious, right? Of course. She becomes a nanny for Bly Manor for these two young children and then there's a couple other people that work there at the manor as well and there's ghosts at the manor and it, there's mystery i guess but it's not very scary i feel like with a show that's called the haunting of like it should be scary just like the haunting of hill house was it just wasn't and it was boring for half of the season i think it just started getting good at episode five but even then it was still sort of hit or miss with the episodes and as you guys have probably heard about the show it wasn't even really a ghost story it was a love story and that was nice i guess and a lot of the relationships were nice characters were okay <laughs> but not scary. So if you're looking for something that's scary, I know it's not Halloween anymore, but if you still want like a horror show, this is not it. And I'm honestly surprised I haven't seen more negative reviews or like hate for the show because I don't mean my boyfriend, we were like very disappointed by it. And honestly, it was so hard to get through the first half of the show. Props if you even kept watching, honestly. So basically I, I wouldn't recommend unless you want like love story, a ghost love story, I guess. Another Netflix show that I watched this month was Emily in Paris starring Lily Collins. I was dying to watch this because I love Lily and it just looked like super fun, right? So it's it's about Emily. She's this 20 something year old marketing person and she ends up getting transferred to the location in Paris for the marketing company she works for to bring sort of like an American eye to everything. And it's like a comedy, drama, romance. It was good. <laughs> it was really cute at times and it got to be pretty cringy at times. It started out, I thought, with a really good premise. I thought it was interesting seeing what it's like in Paris and in France. I'm not sure how accurate it was, but I think 
some of the things in it are true about how it's a much more relaxed work atmosphere in Europe. Like for example, they didn't start work until 10 and they took pretty long lunch breaks, stuff like that. Whereas in North America, I feel like you go in for like eight and people are more like workaholics and stuff like that but then it honestly just got like cringier and cringier i guess as it went i just like not as good as it went along but i still overall did enjoy it oh actually another thing i didn't like is that there is cheating in it with our like main romance which i don't like i feel like aren't we past that as a society like portraying cheating as like a hot thing like oh it's forbidden because he has a girlfriend like no that's messed up find other ways for they to for them to be a forbidden romance like i'm kind of overseeing the cheating stuff and it's hard for me to root for that when i know the guy is cheating on his girlfriend and the girl is okay with him cheating on his girlfriend and she's friends with her also, I don't know if you guys have read Anne and the French Kiss, but I felt like this was like the TV show version of Anne and the French Kiss and for like adults instead of teens. Because as I said about the cheating thing, Anne and the French Kiss also had cheating and it was about a girl like going to France and I'm like, they're literally the same. But despite my issues with it, I'm still excited for season two and I will watch and hopefully there's no more cheating. There's truthfulness. The last TV show I'll talk about is Unsolved Mysteries Volume 2. And again, Netflix disappoints me again. <laughs> I actually still haven't watched the very last episode, but I watched the other, what, five? Just like episode after episode was just disappointing, boring, a different style than what we had in the first season, which is what everyone loved. There were some that I genuinely did not care about. There were ones that had to do with like ghost stories, but I'm not here for ghosts. I wanted ghosts in Bly Manor. That's where I wanted the ghosts. <laughs> I didn't want ghosts in my unsolved mysteries. I want it to be like murder kidnappings that were unsolved, you know? Not a fan of that. Let me know if you guys liked it, but not for me. Okay, then we're gonna talk about the movies, most of which were creepy ones and some of them were good. So stay tuned, I have some good recommendations. So these first two movies that I watched were from Shudder, which is like a streaming service for horror movies. If you're into horror, you probably have heard of it. But the first one was called The Cleansing Hour. So this is about these two guys who have this live stream show where the one guy pretends to be a priest and he pretends to do like seances and exorcisms but it's it's fake but everyone thinks it's real he acts like he's a real priest and then one day during one of their live streams an actual demon possesses someone and suddenly it's a real exorcism that they have to deal with and it's super fun it has all the elements of like exorcism movies that you would like i would highly recommend this one the second shutter movie that we watched was called host and this one was really cool because i believe it was filmed well yeah it was filmed during the pandemic and it takes place on a live zoom call so what you're seeing is just the screen of the zoom call and all the different people's videos of who's on the video call they are trying to do like a virtual seance with each other and then things go wrong from there and you're basically seeing like everyone in their little screens getting affected by these ghosts it was creepy i also just really liked the whole idea of the zoom call again really highly recommend that both of these movies are like pretty short too which is nice if you want more like horror movies i would definitely check these two out and other things that are on shutter i also watched the movie glass which is a part of the like split trilogy like universe finally got around to watching glass where we have the guy from unbreakable the guy from split and then also mr glass and they're all in that like mental institute and they're getting treated by like the psychologist it's sort of like a question of do they actually have superpowers are they actually super heroes or villains whatever or is it just like a psychological thing in your brain where because they believe that they're superheroes or have the superpower then that makes them actually have it and it like changes their biology so that whole idea is really cool i really like all these different takes on superheroes that have been coming out and i think this universe is a really cool one and so if you haven't watched glass or haven't watched split or unbreakable i would definitely recommend watching this series if you're into seeing a cool take on superheroes then netflix disappointed me 
again with some movies that I watched. So I checked out Rebecca, which starred Lily James and Army Hammer, and it was like a thriller vibe, right? And I think it was based off a novel as well, which I did not watch. But basically it's about this girl that's played by Lily James. She's like a poor orphan girl, you know, and she ends up getting married to Army Hammer's character, which, who's really rich and has this really big house. So she goes there and moves in with him because they get married, but she's haunted by the idea of his wife that had died died pretty much like a year ago all of the staff and all of the like decorations in the house just make her feel guilty for not being Rebecca which is the wife's name and then it's also sort of mysterious because it's like how did Rebecca die she just disappeared on a sailboat so we don't know if it was suicide or if someone killed her escalates from there but this was disappointing as there were some boring moments I guess I would say and then ultimately the ending disappointed with a thriller like this you want everything to come together at that moment in the end and that didn't really happen we sort of got some reveals like throughout the movie and then the very ending I felt like there were a few loose ends that were not tied up and it just didn't have that like aha moment of like this is what everything means this is all the questions solved it just was missing that for me there were still things i liked about it like the morally gray characters maybe if you like thrillers that go off of that typical like thriller formula you would like this but i like that thriller formula i like to have the questions up until the big twist at the end so was a bit disappointed with this then i watched holiday which was the rom-com with emma roberts that just came out recently and <laughs> Oh my gosh, what do I even say about the holiday? This movie was a mess. It was a wild ride. I loved it and I hated it. It was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> so the acting is questionable to start, the, but the script is the main issue. We were making jokes about it throughout. It's a movie, maybe watch with your friends at like a sleepover like I did, where a group of you can just kind of like make fun of it, make fun of all of the cringy things that happen. We were saying jokes about how it was, must have been the first draft of the script. It was a fan fiction, basically just chirping it the whole time. And so if you want a movie like that, then watch Holiday and see the mess that it is. But if you are someone who wants like quality movies, and skip this one because I feel like Netflix is taking like anything at this point. I also watched Sweeney Todd for the first time which is that creepy musical with Johnny Depp made by Tim Burton. This was a time. This was disturbing. This also had some boring moments so I wasn't a huge fan and the music wasn't anything special either but I'm glad that I watched it because now I finally know the story of Sweeney Todd. There were some interesting things. This was a movie where like everything came together at the end and it had a satisfying ending. Oh, well, mm, I do wish we could have had like one more scene wrapping things up with certain characters, but overall like the ending was good and it was an interesting story. So I actually would recommend Sweeney Todd if you're into musicals and if you want some like creepy, gory stuff. <laughs> And Jamie Kimmel Bauer was in it and I was really pleased with that. And the last movie I just watched last night was Nobody Sleeps in the Woods Tonight, which I think was trending on Netflix and that's why we watched it. It is a Polish film, but it was dubbed in English, so it was fine to watch. But I loved this premise. It's the typical premise that I love, which is a bunch of, pe bunch of people going off into the woods and then they start dying off. <laughs> but basically it's about this camp for kids who are, are addicted to technology and so they go on this like retreat in nature to get away from technology right and so we're following our one group of teens and their leader and there's a monster in the woods and it starts chasing them killing them that's it but yeah it was really good a lot of the characters were very fun to watch it was scary it was well, it was a little gory. It was a little gross at times, but it was exciting and a good quality movie that I would definitely recommend. So yeah, basically the things that I would highly recommend this month are The Cleansing Hour, Host, Nobody Sleeps in the Woods, three pretty good scary movies. My favorite show this month was probably Emily in Paris it was a fun time so anyways that's my wrap up of what i watched this month go check out my video where i talk about all the books i read this month and please subscribe to my channel i make these videos every month mostly for myself just to kind of like keep track of what i'm watching but anyways thank you guys for watching comment like subscribe and i'll see you in my next video take care